these are dirty, dirty little ladies. We're gonna clean these out. Oh, they need some love. They need some love. Top of the morning to you. This is arguably the most unflattering shot of one of the coolest amps on the planet. This is your 1963, 63 and a half, perhaps, Vox AC30. It's a JMI product. Super cool. Um, cool background here. So let's, um, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna share your special little note. Um, at least parts of it anyway. I'm gonna read this and I will edit it in real time. Um, this is Paul's AC30. Um, let's see. He acquired it in the mid 90s from a shop in Montreal. That's Canada for you guys out there. Um, it supposedly traveled with the searchers early in its life. The aluminum part of the chassis was slightly bent in shipping and he was able to improve it a bit, but it's not perfect. Um, it started life out as a base version. A few small electrolytics were updated before he got it. Brian from Top Hat updated the big electrolytics and a few coupling caps in the late 90s. This was back when, uh, for you guys, uh, back when Brian was out this way in uh, Southern California. Um, a few coupling caps in the 90s. Um, he, uh, Paul himself, did a really, actually, a nice job on doing the uh, the big electrolytics in... 2018. Um, the OT is a mercury magnetics unit um, due to a prior issue. Um, I think uh, Paul himself ended up installing a top boost circuit in it um, and then he removed it. Um, he wants this thing to run as well as it can um, so it can become uh, a heritage piece, and it already is, but he wants he wants to be able to bequeath it to his progeny. And I think we should make that happen. He's got some issues. He, su he suspects the, the vibe slash trim volume pot has an issue because uh, tapping on it or, or bumping it can instigate that issue or make it jump to full volume. Um, and there's some hum, uh, perhaps a bum tube. I'm looking at an old set of Joint Army-Navy Phillips from ARS, you guys don't, you guys may not know, but back when these guys were um, were slapping silkscreen on tubes uh, up in Van Nuys, California, um, Paul over here got himself a quad of six BQ5s. Uh, hopefully they haven't barbecued. We'll find out. Uh, the goal, he wants it to, uh, to be fully healthy and stable and ready for decades to come, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, it's so incredibly hard for me to get this shot. Lyle has those... Uh, has a very professional setup, and so does, so does Brad, as a matter of fact. Um, but that's not me. I run everything off of an iPhone 13 Pro Max, which needs to be upgraded. Um, so hopefully I can do that in the near term. But for now, this is what you goons and mutants are going to get, and you're going to like it. So let me pop this thing off of the stand and give you a sweep over. Actually, you know what? I already have her plugged in. Um, do I? I have her plugged in to the shop speaker cabinet. Uh, but let's get her, let's get her connected to a current limited supply, an isolated current limited supply. We have her set for um, 120 wall volts today. So let's get her going. Actually, I have it set for 115. Let's move her over to 120. Um, and then we're going to see what kind of a dip we get as we uh, allow her to warm up. You know, current and voltage have an inverse relationship in, in this type of environment. So uh, the more current you're going to draw, the less uh, voltage will be um, flowing from the wall. So let's take a peek at what's going to happen. Let's get that current limiter on. Pardon a little bump there. And switch her on. All right, so straight off the bat, we lost uh, 15 volts, warm back up to 10. We're sitting at 100 now. Granted, 
we are uh, we have a current limiter, uh, which is um, essentially going to play some series resistance via this light bulb up here in line with our wall socket or with the electrical outlet. Let's let's not get crazy. So I'm seeing uh, what I would consider a nice healthy glow from a 30 watt tube amp. Perfect, let's switch her off. She's sitting at full power. Um, only a five volt deficit. Um, current draws respectable. Well, we're getting under two amps of current being drawn. Probably about one and a half. Let's bring up some controls here. Oh, Paul, she's getting crispy, buddy. You could probably hear that now. Watch this. All the volumes are cranked up. Oh, brilliant. And the vibe. Let's look at what's going on like for certain I'm not saying the tube is bad but there's a lot of corrosion on these pins and then from what I'm seeing in the socket as well so let's get a good service going here and I'll report back to you all right so we have her cranked up and let me just take you right over to the speaker cabinet it's this uh, 412 behemoth here and I'm gonna um, stitch in. I'll, I'll stitch in with my frequency analyzer it is displaying, which is 120 hertz, as you can hear. And then a little bit of static. So uh, initially, we had some funk in these tube sockets that seems to have sorted itself out after I repositioned the power tubes. But here's that Vibra trim volume. And there's just a pure 120 in the background if you can hear it. That 120 becomes a lot more obvious with the normal channel volume cranked up. Get these shields off. So we'll check these tubes out, uh, do a general service. Um, once I'm happy with where the sockets and the pots are, your, your switches and jacks and all that. I'll start an electronic. Uh, we'll start peeping around and, and do a full electronic assessment. We'll start measuring ripple and, and see where she lays or lies. How's it go? Lay, lie down and I'll lay it on you. That's how you can tell. And we'll get her going from there. Um, and I will do my best to get you guys some better shots of this beautiful little beast. Look at you, the old organ pulls here. I got a pair of Hammonds and a Baldwin 12AX7. I don't know who these were made by, but um, I know the two Hammonds were made in Great Britain. I wonder if they're uh, Mullards, perhaps, or Amperex. Who knows? Super cool, buddy. These are dirty, dirty little ladies. We're going to clean these out. Oh, they need some love. They need some love. Good Lord. Let's get these going. Might as well take a peek at the, uh, the 
preamps too. Let me get you in there. How am I gonna do this? Let's see, how am I gonna do this? Let me curve this light around. Let you guys see behind the scenes on uh, the chaos. There we go. These are not looking so bad. Let's I can't get you to see everything, but you know, the preamps look pretty good. They're going to get a cleaning as well. Let's get this going. All right. Let me go through these once more. They're all pretty damn clean, I'll be honest with you. So I like to use an old tube for this purpose. That's all I need. And we'll hope and pray that that mullet is still good. I'll get the pin, the pins cleaned off. Uh, these uh, these sockets are nice and smooth now. They were incredibly gritty prior. And that's just how she is. Really wash these out. They get a bath. And that's the final one. And check our work. Mighty nice. It's always nice when you don't have to retension these little guys. Excellent. It's always nice. So let's let's get about the business of repopulating this old girl, and we'll do a, another sound check and see if the sockets yielded any improvement. All right, Paul, clean the place up a bit and got your power tube sockets nice, much nicer. even though the exterior may appear to be a little corroded still. Where are we at? It's the interior that counts. I've scrubbed out all of those pinholes. All right, so. She is good. So the amp is very quiet now. Um, I just tested it with my guitar, sounds great. I don't sound great, but this thing does. I'm gonna go through and perform the rest of the service. Um, then I'll break off this rear panel, start taking some measurements. All right, Paul, I've got the background hum significantly quieter. Uh, about 10 decibels quieter, that 120. So there's some more areas I can uh, poke around in, but that is just doing a um, uh, little service on the pots and the tube sockets. You had two bad 12AX7s thus far. Here's your Vibe channel. All the way up. There's still... There's no more cutting out, but if you turn it fast, if you turn it fast, yeah, maybe we'll replace this pot. Let me try to clean it once more. Yeah, I'll try to clean that once more, but Much nicer. Much, much nicer.